G'day and welcome to Good Life at Your Place. Good Life Church is one church in four locations, but we've got friends all over the world. And no matter where you are joining us from, you are massively, massively welcome. Uh, We're about to get right into worship. And I want to ask you, I want to encourage you, don't miss this moment to actually have an encounter point with God. And the music's going to be on and the team's prepared and they're going to lead us in worship and they're going to lead us in song. But worship is an attitude of heart, which starts with an open heartedness to God, a thankfulness to who he is, not just what he's done or not just what he's going to do, but who he is. He's a good, good God. And so today I want to pray and then let's get into worship. So Father, today it's our honor to worship you. I thank you that your presence resides in this place, in this room right now, God. You can connect with every single heart. So we say yes to the amazing God, Lord, that meets us exactly where we're at, that uplifts us from no matter where we're at. And we say yes, an open heart to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. We worship you. We thank you. We adore you. Lord God, we praise you and your name. So God, today, I thank you that you be with every person as we worship, as we lean into the word of God today. Lord God, I thank you that hearts and lives transform. So today we sing and we praise and we worship with a glad and a thankful heart. In Jesus' name. All right, gang, let's get into it. Welcome to church, everyone. Come on, let's praise Jesus today. Sing, I give you glory. I give you glory for all you brought me through. And now I'm ready for what.
Hey, I love it when we get to worship. What an opportunity to lift high the name of Jesus. And God actually resides in the praises of his people. So what a brilliant opportunity we have to connect with God. And I pray that you really met with him in Jesus' name. Hey, um, you are so welcome at Good Life Church. If this is your first time with us or if we haven't seen you in a while, we'd love to get in contact with you. Please go to our website, goodlifechurch.com.au. Go to the Next Steps button. And that's the way that we can actually get to know you a bit better, support you, let you know about a Good Life Church near you. It's always an amazing experience with God and also with the family of God at a Good Life Church. So the, the locations of Good Life Church are on our website as well. And I would encourage you that, uh, that if you can make the effort to be there as a part of the service in person, you will not regret it. And you're always welcome at a Good Life Church near you. Hey, it's offering time. It's that time every service where we have the opportunity to bring an offering to God. And it goes to the work of local church. Even to put on this service right now, this video service that's coming to you, um, it takes a lot of work and it actually takes a lot of money. Good lifers everywhere. Good lifers in our online community, good lifers in our campuses, our physical campuses, give dollars every single week and people find it an, an opportunity to be able to give to be able to keep things going to keep people connected with God to keep people connected with other people to help people on the discipleship journey we have a bible college where we train leaders we have outreach opportunities where we help people in need we help people find Christ we have so much support in this community of believers and no matter how you engage with Good Life Church, someone has paid a bunch of money to make it happen. That's really how it works. And I love it how God makes it really clear in his word that we have the opportunity to be a part of extending his kingdom and being a part of the family by our financial contribution. I would encourage you, don't be the person that doesn't contribute. Don't be the family member that sits back and just receives. When we grow up, when we mature in a family, we start to contribute. We are only like, I think it's next week, we actually start our Heart for the House season where it's not just about the weekly offering that keeps things going, but it's a heart once a year, we have a Heart for the House offering, which is all about the extension of God's kingdom. And we really want to see community centers in the center of communities where we have physical locations. We want to see the extension of God's kingdom. We want to see those community centers, those churches in Maitland, Foster Tunkari, Newcastle and Toronto, not just front and center in the community, but packed full of the people that God loves. Maybe they're finding Christ. Maybe they don't know about him. Maybe they're coming to get a coffee. Maybe they're coming because they're going to put their kid into a childcare. Maybe they're coming because they're desperately in need of answers. Maybe they're people that need the strength to be able to tackle opportunities in front of their lives. Every single offering makes that a possibility. So whether it's weekly tithes and offerings that God goes, hey, will you be a part of it? Will you be a part of the kingdom of God and financing something? When I give generously, I release it into his kingdom. And then as a church, we steward that for the glory of God. But then we're ready to go for that one extra offering. You'll hear about it next week at our inline services and in person at our campuses. So it's a great opportunity to be a part of the good things of God and not miss out. I wanna encourage you to be the person that doesn't miss out on this great adventure of trust in God and then contribution into his kingdom through his house. Hey, let's pray and then we can give. Father, I thank you for the opportunity we have to give. I thank you for great people that are faithful and faith-filled. I thank you that you meet every person's uh, situation, every life, every heart. You meet us where we're at. And God, you are the one that's growing us in our faith, in our generosity, Lord God. And we get to be a part of the great things, Lord God, through our generosity. We get to be a part of those great things, touching people's lives, transforming lives, transforming families and transforming communities. It's our honor to give. We don't want to miss out in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, Methods of Good listed on the screen and you could be a part of it. I love it. I, it's a part of my life as well. We just budget it in and it's ready to go as our offering uh, to the house of God. We give it to God through the work of local church. So if you want to do that, you just set it up like a standing order, like a standard issue part of your budget. So God bless you as you do that. Hey, we've got great things always coming up at Good Life Church. And to let us know, here is the Good Life update. Here we go. 
Hey guys, my name is Luke and this is the Good Life Church Update where we let you know everything coming up in the life of our church. Thursday 20th of May is our Vision Builders Night with special guest Dave McDonald. If you're a business person, entrepreneur, or want to partner financially with building the kingdom, then this night is perfect for you. It's hosted at our Newey campus, but is open to everyone. We have a fresh new series happening across our campuses, Crazy Faith. Come expectant, come prepared. These weekends are brilliant to invite a friend to. You can catch up on any messages you've missed out on on the Good Life podcast. What a brilliant way to get some good life in your midweek. Follow your campus or Good Life Church Global on Facebook and Instagram or head to goodlifechurch.com.au for more information. That's all from me. Have a fantastic week and we'll catch you next weekend. Well, I told you there's always good things happening at Good Life Church. And so if you want to be a part of those, um, you can you can run the video back and you can check that out. You can go to the website, follow Good Life Church on socials, all the ways of being in contact and keeping up to date. You can make that happen. Knock yourself out. It's always a great week at Good Life Church and you'd be welcome to be a part of any of those things. Hey, the preacher today bringing the word of God is Pastor Stephanie Salvini. She's a part of our Newcastle team. She was a part of our church plan team into Auckland and this was recorded at the Mother's Day service at Good Life Church Newcastle. This is a brilliant message. You're going to love it. It's not just to the mums, it's for everyone. So buckle up, be filled with faith, take notes. I'll see you at the end of this. You are going to love it. There you go. Well, look, we got back to Australia 10 weeks ago now, which just my mind is boggling because it feels like not that long ago but then it also feels like it never happens because there's a large part of me that is just like, did it happen? Like, did I even leave Australia ever? Uh, It's just been wild, but it's honestly so, so good to be back and I am enjoying it heaps better than the first time I was here. Uh, The first time being the first entirety of my life from June 1990 to January 2020. Uh, Quick maths, that means I'm turning 31 next month and uh, I'm excited. I'm not, I'm depressed. It's really upsetting. 31. It's really sad, guys. Am I upset about it? Yes. (laughs) I'm really old. But also, am I just going to party anyway? Absolutely. And does my party look like just sitting at home with a few close friends eating food? Yes, it does. Because I'm an introvert and that's what we're about. Um, But there you go. Absolutely probable that I will be spending my 31st birthday the same way I spend most other days. Just eating food and having a good time. (laughs) And so there you go. Look, I'm going to pray before we get into the Word of God tonight because I tend to talk really fast. And if we don't pray, um, you won't know what's going on. So thank you, Lord. God, thank you so much that you are here and that you want to speak to each person in this place tonight. God, I thank you that you, uh, it doesn't matter, like, what we walked in from or what we're going home to tonight right now is what matters in this moment with you. So we ask that you would open our hearts and open our ears and soften us to what you want to say to us in Jesus' name. Amen. Matthew 11 verse 28 is the part of the Bible that I'm going to read right now. And it may or may not come on the screen. I'm not sure where that's at, but here we go. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Have you ever been in a desperate situation and a desperate circumstance where you're like hunting and searching for something that you just can't find? This morning, everyone was like, no, we know where everything in our life is. We've got it all together. I was like, okay, it's just me. Uh, but have you ever been on the hunt? I don't know if you're looking for snacks and you're like, I'm sure I left this amazing snack in this cupboard and it's not there anymore. And someone else in the house has eaten it. Or maybe you're looking for your car keys. Maybe you're looking for your wallet, your sunglasses. These seem to be the things we lose all the time, right? But you just keep looking in all the wrong places and you just can't find them. I don't know if you've ever been. Has anyone been in that situation? Okay, good. It's not just me tonight. As a mum, I feel I'm gifted with two very strange but kind of helpful um, superpowers. And here's what they are. The first one is, this is a really good one. I can smell when the temperature in a room changes. (laughs) I'm really, yeah, like a room, not outside. I can smell when the temperature in the room changes. And uh, the second thing is I can find things without even having to go looking for them. 
I know, right? Superpowers. Um, Tim, my husband, however, is gifted with the skill of looking and not finding the things that he is looking for. And so often the conversations in our house go, Steph, do you know where my gym tag is? Steph, well, he doesn't talk that high. Steph, do you know where my gym tag is? <laughs> Steph, do you know where my wallet is? Do you know where my glasses are? And I'm like, yes. Um, and I do like a quick scan in my brain. Don't even have to leave what I'm doing. Could be in the middle of changing Lenya, our baby. Or I could be doing anything. And I'll be like, in my mind, I've seen it somewhere. Yes. And I just know exactly where it is. Suitcase, bedroom, left side, under a shirt you haven't worn for two weeks. Don't even know why we own it. Why the gym tag is there. Couldn't tell you how it got there. Also couldn't tell you. But I know it's there. And I know that's exactly where you're going to find it. And he goes and finds it. He's like, thanks. <laughs> Didn't even have to go looking. I have the ability to find what I'm not even looking for. And uh, it's at the point where Tim just doesn't even bother looking now because he knows he's going to keep looking in all the wrong places. And so he just goes, stands kind of there, getting ready for the day. Sounds kind of worse than I thought it was going to be, but he's just like, where's this, where's this, where's this? I'm like, boom, boom, boom. He's like, excellent. <laughs> and I just think it's a great skill to have. And if you can inquire, acquire that in life, that'll be really good for everybody. Um, but as a mum, I, and as mums in this place tonight, I'm not sure if there's many of you here at 5 p.m., but I think if we were a keyboard shortcut, we would be Control-Alt-F, which is like find, right? That's our superpower. And uh, Tim reckons that if men were a shortcut, a keyboard shortcut, and I don't get offended, sensitive, sensitive topic. But Tim reckons if you're a man, the keyboard shortcut would be control, alt, delete. Because basically, it's like, if it's not working, get rid of it. If it's not going to turn out the way it needs to, get rid of it. If it's too much work, get rid of it. Control, alt, delete. And he wanted me to clarify that if you're using a Mac, uh, it's not the same. It's command, not control. It's important to know that if you're working on a Mac. It's, yeah, write that down, write that down. But maybe you've never actually lost anything and maybe you're just a finder like I am. Is there any other finders in this place? Maybe you have never had to go searching, but have you ever played with a dog? Yeah. I know it doesn't... Good. There's a lot more dog people here tonight. And I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Because some people have seen a dog, which is good. Dogs are cute. I'm the person that like videos them and I make my own voiceovers for dogs, just for my own personal entertainment. It's like, what would the dog be saying? I'll tell you. <laughs> or maybe you've patted a dog, another highlight of life, right? You're really living if you get to pat a dog. But have you ever played with a dog and like had a ball and you're like sitting down, you have that bit of a wrestle moment with a dog, big dog, small dog, you shouldn't have a small dog. Um, <laughs> you're playing with a dog. <laughs> amen, amen, amen. Uh, and you like do the little cute wrestle thing where they're like, ah, I don't want you to take it. But then you take it and they're like, all right then. And you go to throw it, but instead of letting go of the ball, you just kind of hide it. And the dog goes, ah! and they're just like, yes. And they just run off and they leg it and they're like, oh, no! and they're looking everywhere for this ball. They're pinging around the yard. They're smelling all the bushes. They're digging everywhere, trying to get the ball. And you know, gosh, they're cute, but they're not going to find this ball because they're looking in all the wrong places. The problem we face today is that sometimes we, in a desperate attempt to find peace and to be relaxed, go hunting for rest. It's a desperate pursuit for a sense of freedom, an urgent seeking for a place of healing. Could it be that we don't know true rest because we're looking in all the wrong places? We are told nearly daily that if we cut back our work hours, maybe get a better work-life balance, maybe if you just get more sleep, maybe if you just have more self-love, maybe if you just attend church when you're vibing it, maybe if you just stop serving and stop going to meetings, maybe if you just let go of all your responsibilities, then you will find rest. The thing is, though none of those things are bad, none of these things will bring true, life-giving, refreshing rest. All of these things are kind of just like an airball <laughs> that the world is throwing at us and we're running around aimlessly trying to catch. Jesus says, come to me and I will give you rest. Like he will give it to you like a gift. He will just hand it over to you. No hunting required. But sometimes it seems too good to be true, right? Sometimes we think it's going to take too much effort. Sometimes we just don't feel like it. And so we keep looking in all the wrong places. 
But I want you to imagine tonight what your life would look like if rest was a close companion, if rest was a gift that you had with you every day, if rest was something that you were able to secure in your life on a regular basis. Imagine the energy that you would be able to bring not just to your dreams and your gifts and your talents, but to making a difference in your community as well. Imagine the energy that you would have in relationships, in your workplace. Imagine what you would be able to bring. Imagine the ideas that would have room to swirl around in your mind because you were rested. Imagine the possibilities if you were living from a place of freshness and rest rather than striving and trying to continue to hunt for this thing that everyone is looking for, rest. Things would look so different, wouldn't they? I know for myself personally, when there's been those moments of like hunting and searching for rest across the years, in that one year I went to uni, thanks Pastor Dave, uh, I did a really good job though, that's what counts. But in all those years of searching and hunting for rest, the only thing that has ever truly brought rest is Jesus. And rest is available for all of us today, but not just today, tomorrow as well, and not just tomorrow, but the next day as well, and not just that day, but the day after as well, because rest is not found in the hunting and striving. Rest is found in Jesus. And so I just have a couple of thoughts that I'd love to share tonight that hopefully will encourage you and challenge you to lean in and find rest in Jesus and let go of the hunting and striving and searching in all the wrong places. And the first thought is this, relationship. Relationship. A few years ago, I was talking to Pastor Dave and I have talked to him since, so it's okay. Um, But a few years ago, I was talking to Pastor Dave And I was like, all right, we've got a really busy conference coming up. It's like super busy. There's conference here. There's this there. There's meals here. There's a meeting here. And you got this person flying in then. And you got to take this person to the airport there. And I'm like, this is just a lot. You're going to need some rest time. And Pastor Dave was like, excellent. Good thoughts. Chuck in a couple hours at the gym here. Chuck in an hour at the gym there. And I was like, what? (laughs) What are you talking about? (laughs) What are you talking about, Willis? And... uh, I was like, that just sounds counterintuitive to me. (laughs) That doesn't make sense to me because I don't know about you, but I don't go to the gym to relax. I actually don't go to the gym at all. And uh, I thought, this sounds crazy. Why would you choose to go to the gym to find rest? But Pastor Dave went on to explain to me this thing called active rest, which is essentially resting without completely stopping. It's finding a place of rest that refreshes you and strengthens you rather than just sapping sapping the life out of you. Jesus says, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. But how often do we actually seek our comfort before we seek Jesus? How often do we head straight for the couch, our our doona, our tuna, I don't head for tuna, uh, head straight for the couch and our doona, and we just kind of sit down and we go to a place where we feel that we can be comfortable and unwind. We go straight for a quick fix of um, real, a quick escape from reality, straight for a quick injection of silence, a moment of sanity. And I don't know what your world looks like. You might be at uni, you might be in high school, you might be working, you might be a parent, you might not be any of those things and just be a really great human. (laughs) I don't know what your world looks like, but there's a good chance that we're looking for rest in all the wrong places. And I totally get it because life can be wild sometimes. (laughs) My past year or so has been bonkers, but but bonkers. And sometimes the the pressures in our world of family or of friendships, the pressure of your finances is so big sometimes, the pressure of your faith, the pressure of fears, the pressure of what your future is going to look like, the pressure of your physical health and how that's going. Sometimes all of these things just compound and it feels like the last thing you want to do at the end of a really big day is sit and talk to Jesus. You would way rather just sit on a couch and turn Netflix on or play the PlayStation or just scroll on your phone for four hours accidentally. Screen time exceeded seven hours. What? How? I don't know. It just happens, right? For some reason, we would rather turn our brain off instead of seeking Jesus. But Jesus says, come to me. Your best friend who you sometimes go to when you're not doing great and you've got a lot on, is really good, but they're not Jesus. Your mom is awesome, hopefully, (laughs) but she's not Jesus. Your mate from high school is good, but he's also not Jesus. 
James 4 verse 8 promises that if we draw near to God, He will draw near to us. And throughout the Word of God, you find um, promises that God will be our strength, that He will be our comfort, that He will be our counsellor, that He will be our saviour, that He will be our safe place. And so when we draw near to God, we're not just drawing near to this thing in the sky, we're drawing near to our strength, we're drawing near to peace, we're drawing near to comfort, we're drawing near to the things that we actually need. And we begin, when we begin to rest, we need to actively pursue Jesus every day. And that looks like opening your Bible, one of these bad boys. I 10 out of 10 recommend a paper Bible. This is a trash your Bible, TYB, look it up, it's good. Gives you heaps of space to like scribble and just ruin the Bible with all your notes and it's really awesome. You could start to pray. Maybe you're not comfortable with praying. Maybe you want to learn to pray. Today is a great day to start. Maybe you could worship your way through your situation. But as we begin to pursue Jesus and seek Jesus and come to Jesus for our place of rest, you can watch as rest is gifted to you from Jesus himself. You'll watch as rest unwraps itself and reveals peace of mind and clarity of thought and eased emotions. And isn't that the thing that causes us to be up at night sometimes? It's our mind and it's our thoughts and it's our emotions coming into play and to wrestle and to freak you out sometimes, right? But when we come to Jesus, we come to a place of rest. Rest begins first in relationship with Jesus. Come to me. The second thing is realignment. This isn't something we talk about a lot because, you know, everyone wants to do their own thing. But how good would it be if we were, when we were tired and weary, this is really good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write this down somewhere one day and put it on a poster. If when we were really weak and tired, we went to Jesus and we were like, Jesus, I'm like really tired and I need some help. And imagine if he was like, sweet as, take a seat, kick your feet up, just lie down, rest, drop all of your responsibilities. <laughs> Don't do anything that makes you uncomfortable. Don't do anything that causes you to stretch. <laughs> Don't do anything that would mean that you have to sacrifice anything. <laughs> Just kick your feet up for my couch is comfy and my doona is light. <laughs> like how good would that be? I'd love that. Because <laughs> I'm not going to lie, I do love my couch. I'm really good friends with my couch. I have my spot. Does anyone have their spot? That they're just like, That's my spot. Don't sit in my spot. It's like you sit at church sometimes, right? Too touchy. Um, but how good would it be? But Jesus doesn't say, my couch is comfy and my doona is light. He says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. A yoke is actually something that they put on these cattle that joins them together and helps them to move together to... I've just lost the word, but work a field. <laughs> they work to work together and it enables them to pull a larger load than they could pull on their own. And Jesus is calling us in these moments of rest to get to work with him. Faith and action always go hand in hand. So instead of carrying the burdens and pressures and stresses of life, he invites us to attach ourselves to him. He invites us to a relationship with him where he will shoulder the load for you. He'll be your hiding place. He'll cover you and he will allow you room to regain your strength. And it's all relational. It's all in close proximity. And it's this incredible, incredible rest that is refreshing and life-giving. It's not like sitting in front of the TV and you get up hours later and you're like, I, I, I want to go to bed. <laughs> like you're still tired. Resting in Jesus changes the game. It refreshes you and restores you. And so as we take up God's yoke, Jesus' yoke and work with him, it causes a realignment in our life. Suddenly his heart and his purpose and his plan and his way becomes our priority. It causes a realignment of our mind and our will and our emotions. And like I said, sometimes those things just get away with us. But as we come back to Jesus for a place of rest, he realigns those things to his way. It's a reminder to love God, yes, but also to continue to love others, to disciple and to grow and to help others grow in faith as well. Active rest in Jesus, yes, looks like a place to recover and refresh and restore, but it also looks like continuing to do what God called us to do, but doing it with the strength of heaven. Now, in New Zealand, I joined a gym, just one gym. It was called Swan Fit. How good is that? Swan Fit. <laughs> and uh, it was like CrossFit, 
Mixed with Josh Pettigrew, kettlebell obsession, right? If you don't follow Josh Pettigrew, do that. He's PT online. You can help you out. Um, um, I went from literally no exercise at all, like literally none. In my whole life, I've barely done PE at school, let alone exercise after school. And so I went from no exercise ever. I just also had a baby, so like not super mobile, <laughs> to getting up at 4.30 a.m. multiple times a week and signing up for a six-week challenge, which just destroyed my confidence. I spent the entire first session that I was there bawling my eyes out. I deliberately chose a dark spot in the corner of the room. It's like heaps of people, 4.30 in the morning, and I was like sobbing because, first of all, it was really early, which I'm not okay with. Second of all, it was super loud. I don't know why at the gym they have to like have music that's like, Go, go, go! I'm like, I'm going! I'm going! (laughs) Also, they're just yelling at you, like, drop and give me 20! Give me 20 more! 20 more! 20 more! I only had three in me! (laughs) I'm just sobbing. And then on top of that, they have the audacity to tell me, just go at your own pace and just take a rest when you need to. I was like, oh, that's actually, that's nice. (laughs) But no one else is resting, (laughs) so I've got to keep up. (laughs) And so I'm like crying because it's the worst situation I could ever be in. Um, But they did say that if you do choose to rest, it's got to be an active rest. You can't sit down, which is upsetting again, right? And so I'm in this gym and it's dark and I'm sobbing and I'm like, I need a rest so bad. So I'm just like sitting there like this. I'm like, I am, I'm I'm not dying. I'm okay. I was really upset. Um, but they actually say, I, I continued the six-week challenge, just FYI, I nailed it. I lost 18 centimetres, which is pretty good effort. Um, but they say that you can rest as long as you don't stop completely. Because when you stop completely, your body begins to cool down and it begins to be harder to jump back into what you were doing. But also, you can cause damage or injuries. And the same can actually be said of our faith as well. Now, sometimes when we need to rest, we do actually need to drop a few things in our life. Maybe for a season, you need to step back from thing, from some things, redesign how you want your life to look, have a look at the things that are going on. But can I encourage you in a season where you feel you need to rest and pull back from some things to do it in relationship with somebody who has godly wisdom and can walk you through that as well? And can I encourage you not to stop for so long that your faith gets cold? Don't stop for so long that your soul begins to grow cold to the church. Don't stop for so long that you resent God's people. Don't stop for so long that you won't accept God's word as truth. Don't stop for so long that you become cynical or passive or disengaged from God and His plan for planet Earth. James 2.26 teaches us that faith without deeds is dead. Faith without action is dead. And that's very Possibly why Jesus, when he calls us to a place of rest, calls us to a place of active rest where we can still outwork our faith and find healing and find strength and find peace. Because when we just cease everything, is it any wonder that we feel like we're losing our faith or that we're just not feeling it anymore, that we don't think church is for us? Is it any wonder that we feel like our, we don't want to be in church anymore when we've actually just disengaged from God completely? Rest causes a realignment. The third thing is this, rhythm. The message version of Matthew 11 reads like this. Come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me and watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. You know, too many people are caught up trying to live a balanced life. But balance doesn't lead to or flow from a place of rest. Rhythm does. Balance speaks of allocating equal parts of your energy and your time and your finances to all the different things going on in your life and just expecting and assuming and dreaming that nothing will ever go wrong. If you just balance everything out, everything will be sweet. It'll cause zero issues. But actually, when you look at someone who's trying to do that with your life, what you'll find is that it doesn't really work in most seasons. It also looks rigid and boring, it's predictable and safe, and it actually doesn't allow room to grow your capacity, to grow your strength, or to grow your faith. Rhythm, however, is different. 
It's not about equal allocation of energy. It's about purposeful, God-directed movements. Rhythm is resting in God, working with Him and moving with Him. Rhythm can change when needed. Rhythm flows from a place of rest and brings joy to the juggle and the journey that you are walking through. And to the onlooker, rhythm is sexy. I said sexy in church. Rhythm flows from a place of rest. I just said that. Rhythm is sexy and rhythm is appealing and intriguing. It says to the unbeliever, God's way is better than our way. It says to the world, I found what you're looking for. Stop chasing the air ball. Stop looking in all the wrong places. I found rest. I found life giving, life um, breathing. I found refreshing rest in Jesus. I found a rhythm of grace that affects the everyday moments of my life. I found a relationship that changes everything. I have found the ability to realign myself with God's purposes and God's plans, and it has changed the game for me. Rest calls causes a rhythm to flow. And so I wonder today how many of us have been hunting for rest in all the wrong places. In a desperate pursuit for a sense of freedom and urgent seeking for a place of healing. Today, life-giving, healing, refreshing rest is found in Jesus. And tomorrow, life-giving, refreshing, healing rest is found in Jesus. And on Tuesday, life-giving, refreshing, healing rest is found in Jesus. And day after day after day, healing, refreshing, life-giving rest is found in Jesus. It's actually okay to get to a place where you're like, I need rest. You might be here tonight and you're like, I am just mentally, physically, emotionally, whatever, exhausted. And I feel like I've got nothing left to give. I've got nothing left in the tank to offer. And you know what? That's like, that's just, we're human and it's okay. You're not a failure if you're at that place. You're not weak if you're at that place. You haven't done something wrong if you're at that place. But tonight, the invitation is to find rest in Jesus, to find a rest that will change the game so that maybe... There's a longer distance between you feeling like you need rest. Maybe there's a longer gap between you feeling like you need to be in control and have it all figured out because you know what? You're going to realign your life to Jesus. You're going to find relationship in Jesus. You're going to find a rhythm of grace in Jesus. And I sense today that God actually just wants to bring rest back to His people. Not self-love, not balance, not the things that we are told day after day after day are the things that we should be doing though none of them wrong to a degree. But true rest is found in Jesus. And I don't know where you're at, like I said, but you might be a uni student in this place and you're like, I feel the inner struggle right now between what I'm currently studying and what I feel like maybe I want to study instead or what I want to do with my life and what my parents want me to do with my life or a bunch of different things that could be going on relationally or all this kind of stuff that just happens in your life and it's causing you to feel just run down, causing you to feel empty, like you've just been drained. Today, Jesus sees you and He's like, you know what? I love you and I have rest for you tonight. I love that you're chasing after me. I love that you are chasing after your dreams. I love that you are studying at uni and doing all this stuff, but come to me tonight and find rest. Maybe you're a business person here. Maybe you're someone who is an entrepreneur. I can never say that word properly. Did I say it right? I just looked at JT to tell me that. I don't know. (laughs) Is that right, JT? (laughs) No matter what you're doing right now, whether a professional or student, whether you're in high school, Tonight, the invitation is here to find rest in Jesus. And rest is not a place of weakness. It's actually a place of strength. It's when we come to Jesus and we get rest from Him. It's not about striving. It's not about pain. It's about healing and peace and restoration. When we come to Jesus, it's not going, oh, well, I'm not good enough. It's going, well, actually, I need Jesus. Jesus is my strength. I need to find rest in Jesus. It's not saying you're a failure. It's just acknowledging that you're not God and that's okay, but God is God and He's got it under control. And all we need to do is just come back to Him and rest in Jesus. We don't have to try and struggle and strive and figure it all out on our own. Tonight, there is rest in Jesus. 
All we need to do is bring Him our mess and our burdens and our weariness and He promises to restore us. And not only that, but then He causes us to be a part of something bigger than ourselves. Suddenly, we don't just have energy for tomorrow. We don't just have energy for our immediate um, responsibilities, but we've got the energy and the passion and the vision for something bigger. Suddenly, being for our city is something we could do. Suddenly, influencing a workplace is something that you could do. Suddenly, influencing your university, influencing your high school, discipling people, leading people, making a difference in your world and the community, starting outreach programs, starting something that truly meets the needs in your community seems like an achievable thing because you're living from a place of strength, because you're living from peace found in Jesus. But we will only ever know this rest if we stop looking in all the wrong places. And so tonight, I just wanna pray for us across this room because Jesus has made the invitation, come to me and I will give you rest. And now it's our turn to respond. And so why don't you just close your eyes across this room? This isn't like a hands up thing. I'm not gonna ask or embarrass anybody with anything, but I just love to pray for you. If you're here tonight and you're like, I need this rest, I need rest. Then God is ready to meet you where you're at right now. Would you open up your heart and your life to Him? God, I thank You that You are moving. I thank You that You are our strength, that You are our peace, that You are our Saviour, that You're our friend that You're our safe place. And tonight, God, I declare Your rest across this church. Rest over hearts, rest in minds, rest physically, God, in across this room. We thank You for Your mighty power at work in our lives. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Well, what a message, what an impacting message for all of us. And we're so thankful for brilliant people like Pastor Steph who can bring that. Hey, look, if you responded in any way to that message, if you said yes to Jesus for the first time or are coming back to Him, don't miss the opportunity to be connected and do the journey and continue to grow. This is not a one night stand. This is important and we want to stand with you. Would you do me a favor? And this is the big thing that I'm gonna ask you to do is to go to our website, and click on the next steps, put in your details because that's how we can actually come alongside you and help you no matter where you're at. If you're near a Good Life campus or you're not, learning to walk with God and do the journey of discipleship and stand strong for Him is massive and it's so important and we would love to help you on that journey. So go to the website, goodlifechurch.com.au, follow the next steps button, put down your details. One of the team, one of the pastors will be in contact with you and we would love to help you in and on that journey. Um, I tell you what, so many great things to learn from that message and so many great things, not just to hear and learn, but now to put into practice. So I'd encourage you, just write some notes about what you could do as a response of faith. Faith without works is dead. So we wanna be the type of people that say, look, because I've heard the word of God, I don't just wanna be a hearer. I wanna be a doer. And so write out an action plan. And it could include your prayer time with God and coming closer to Him and making sure you commit to that time with the Lord or in the Word. Um, and it could be now, well, I'm gonna do this differently with my relationships, with my health, with my time, with my priorities. Be the person that makes those steps. And uh, if we can help you in any way to continue on that journey, we would love that. Hey, that's it. That's good life at your place. Like I said, and we're so glad that you're with us. But if you want to get to a Good Life Church campus in the flesh, then all the details and directions and times are on the website, goodlifechurch.com.au. We're so glad that you've been with us. Can't wait to see you soon. Catch up.